What is up, guys? Happy Wednesday. Kind of a different episode for you. It's just going to be a solo episode. It's going to be me uh, talking to you. This was recorded live in our Facebook group, TOGFB.com, a.k.a. Fulfilled Photographers. So if you are trying to get you know early access to the community, early access to different things that come out, uh, workshops, education, I would love for you to come join us. Last night, we had an awesome workshop on building a portfolio that sells, niching down. That's going to be how you you know increase your value one of those ways. But uh, today's just going to be really fun. I want to talk to you guys specifically, mostly wedding photographers but any photographer that wants to build a larger brand and a larger business that and i don't mean larger by like size of team but i want to talk about you know the difference between there's a a threshold and you stop feeling like a freelancer and start feeling like a business right like jay-z said i'm not a businessman i'm a business man so one of the things we're going to talk about today is is a way that you can set yourself apart increase your value and then increase your rates, okay? So if you're a wedding photographer, this is gonna be mainly for you, but we're gonna talk about one of those things. So if you wanna make more money, right? If you wanna set yourself apart, if you want to have couples who respect you and listen to you more and have more fun at weddings and have more stress-free weddings and have your couples have more fun at weddings and make the work that you wanna make, this is going to be the episode for you. Going to be a little bit shorter, bite-sized for you guys. Um, but we're going to talk about how to do that. We're also going to have a little bit of an exciting announcement in this. If you have, are not in the Facebook group, I would 100% encourage you to join it. This is the week you do not want to not be in this group, TOGFB.com. We're going to talk about a little bit why in this episode. But uh, without any further ado, here's going to be a really fun episode for you guys. Super excited. Here we go. So, yeah, I wanted to, you know, hop in here and do a solo episode, no guest, um, and just walk through something I've been thinking about as um, I have been a wedding photographer for about 10 years. Uh, And, you know, those first few years, I was really like finding myself as a wedding photographer. I was trying to figure things out everything that you guys go through right like the pricing and shooting and having an idea at a wedding and like a photo that you want to get and not getting that and really just trying to uh you know figure that out and like what does that look like and so i um you know when i first shot my first few weddings it was really kind of um like funky and it was um you know, I was still learning the ropes of what I liked and what I needed to make the best images I can make. I was uh, reactive more than proactive, right? You know, you kind of, uh, you know, you talk to the couple, hey, when should I show up? And you show up and you just kind of like go where they're going, right? You just follow what they're doing. And, you know, that is, um, that's totally normal when you're first starting out, right? But over time, as my business grew, I would naturally get, you know, questions from couples, right? on how to do this or how to do that. Like everything from, you know, getting ready spaces. Hey, what do you think about this place? We're getting ready for photos. And you, what happens, at least for me, was I'd say, oh, I, well, I didn't know I had an opinion about this, but my goal would be, I wanna make the best images, right? I wanna make uh, the best images, have the less, the least amount of stress and have the most fun. Like it was, it was very simple for me. And so, you know, I give my opinion and then another couple would ask and say, hey, what do you think about getting ready spaces? And I was like, well, uh, just copy and paste from this email, right? Or you write a new email and you hopefully say it the right way. And, um, and then couples would have really cool getting ready spaces if they valued photos, which if you're a, a photographer that wants to stand out in general, then you have to help people like you have to be convicted that photos are valuable. That's something for me, it was really hard to learn. It was hard to even call myself a professional photographer, right? Like we don't use that terminology too much, but it was hard to come in there and like assert your will, if you will. That's what it feels like when you give advice sometimes. Um, I wanted to do it gently, but at the same time say like, no, like this is uh, what we found and you have the data for. You have the photos that show, hey, this is usually what's best case scenario, right? The same reason you might shoot uh, an hour before sunset, you can say this is when the most flattering light occurs during the day. Um, And so, yeah, as my business grew, uh, more people asked for my advice and I had to kind of develop some answers for this and I and but it gave me a good opportunity to figure out what I wanted um, 
on wedding day, right? Like we talked about, I want to be stress-free, right? I don't want to be like, ah, uh, you know, I wanted my clients to feel stress-free and have fun and know that like I've set them up to get photos where they're going to look awesome and feel awesome. Um, and then I also wanted to make photos that I was proud as proud, proud of. And so I wanted to have like, I wanted to set it up for success, if you will. Like I wanted to give myself the best chance of creating the photos that I want, if that makes sense. And in theory, the photos you want to make are what your client wants to make. Hopefully, you know, like they want the standard stuff, um, but then also they're hiring you for your personality, your brand, your vision, and also how your images make them feel, right? Like most clients, I don't feel like could tell the difference between light and airy uh, and like dark and moody or colorful or something like that. Most people wouldn't be able to tell you, but how those photos make them feel, right? Like a posed stale image versus like a vibrant, fun uh, reception image. Uh, two different brands, two different goals, but they can definitely tell the difference between those two. So whatever you shoot, whether you are light and airy or the other kind or something else, um, you know, you want to keep keep consistently making images that feel that way. That's why it's important. And I think like, you know, this is not about editing, but uh, you can change your editing a little bit. Like just give you permission right now, how the images feel. That's what matters. Um, and so, yeah, your clients view you as an expert they are looking to you for help you're usually you know second third fourth vendor booked in line um most of my couples don't have wedding vendor or don't have a wedding planner and so they're booking me before um they have a planner to help them with timeline they don't know what they don't know yet right like if you've listened to our sam jacobson episode on sales uh on the sales call you never want to ask like how many hours do they need you kind of want to provoke uh or promote the idea of you know, however many hours you want to sell or whatever amount of hours it takes for you to do your best job, right? So for me, that's probably like eight to 10 hours for most people, right? Uh, some people can do that in six. Some people need 12, um, you know, if you're doing lots of stuff. And so, you know, they're viewing you as an expert. And what I found was I could help communicate, um, you know, um, my expertise, the things that I was learning, the things that if they saw a photo they liked, I could tell them how we got it and the things we needed to do that, right? So I said, hey, if you like this photo at sunset, we're gonna have to make some time to shoot at sunset, right? We're gonna make that a value. If you want your earrings and your shoes and all that stuff shot, we're gonna need to make time for that, right? We're gonna have to either charge more, we're gonna have to be in a room with, think windows, not lights. That's one of the things we say. Uh, Cause people think like, oh, there's so much good lighting in this room cause they see all these lights. And I'm like, no, please, like just give me windows. I don't need any lamps. Um, and so, you know, that was really helping me because I found out when I showed up to weddings where I didn't know what was going on, I'd be nervous, right? And then when you're nervous, you're not making the most creative work that you can or or even it's not as fun for you. And if a client can tell, like if you're not good at faking it, then that makes it even worse, right? And so, you know, eventually as I wanted to increase my client experience, right? Because if, if you build your client experience, uh, you know, it helps your marketing. That's my number one thing is I want to get just leads in the door. You guys know that. Um, and it also would increase my value as like not every other vendor is doing this. That was one of the compliments we get a lot from our couples is that we communicate a lot between inquiry and delivery. Uh, our clients get 27 emails from me. So a lot. Um, but we're always talking, giving them advice, setting the tone. You know, that's a Mace Photography principles to set the tone. And so um, there was only a few wedding guides out there. Um, you know, the kind of these books that were uh, meant to be, you know, pretty educational, a little bit of inspirational um, and just kind of help couples kind of have a, a day that would fit a certain thing, uh, fit a certain ideals that helped those photographers who made them. And uh, I bought a few of them. I thought they were cool and I used them for a while when I didn't have the answers to uh, some of the questions that couples were asking. It really helped to say, okay, I'm gonna adopt this expert's opinion on this. Um, but for years, none of those guides really felt like me. Like my the language they used, the the branding even you know wasn't really modern it was you know more that serif you know colorful um kind of old school times new roman vibes and and then as my business grew and i wanted to shoot more inclusive couples there wasn't inclusive language and any of that stuff and i had to figure out how to use that language to make people feel not just welcome but to feel wanted and that was really important to me as our brand evolved, right? You know, colorful photos for colorful people, eliminate fear, create connection and help people become fulfilled in who they are and who they're becoming. Like we needed to be better at that kind of stuff. And, um, and so I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to make an effort and I, I wanted to like have a brand overhaul. Right. And so I finally got to that point where we did like a full overhaul 
redid our site, hired the designer, redid our, our whole uh, wedding guide completely from scratch and just said, this is what I'm going to include in mine. And, you know, so like a lot of our brides or our, our, our couples don't do getting ready photos. You know, they're like, hey, show up half an hour before I put my dress on. Let's roll. They don't care about flat lays. And so I wanted to create a wedding guide that like cater to that all of our couples do a first look almost all of them like um so i wanted to give them like pros and cons and the advantages and different timelines and just things that could get them started and then just some inspiration on different outfits for different sized people different colored people right like different uh shades of everybody and it was it caught on so well and it was such a good branding position for me because couples would be like oh this is different. And we send that the first week, a couple books usually, uh, with a few other things that are included in that. And if you haven't been on Patreon yet, I have everything I send a client, uh, post on Patreon, patreon.com slash the bearded tog. Um, and so, yeah, I sent that to all of our couples and the response is just so great. Like one, our weddings are easier, right? They're more fun. I have a second photographers come to weddings and they're like, this wasn't stressful at all. I'm like, well, we set that up. You know, that's that's our fault in a good way because like we, you know, set this up for success. And, you know, the other thing is too, is like our, our clients feel prepared. You know, they they feel like they know what they need to do. They And if anything, the advice that they're using is based on the photographer's advice. And then every other bit of advice from mom or a bridesmaid or something like that, they're measuring that up against the expert's word, which is kind of cool, you know, because now they're going to say, no, our photographer told us we're going to do it this way because of this. And like, they know they're now informed decision makers rather than like floundering around. And so all that to say that set us apart from our other vendors, right? We are inclusive, you know, and we were very strong about that, having inclusive language and we're still working on that. And then in addition, you know, we had this hundred plus page book with tons of topics to help couples have weddings that look and feel the way they already saw in our work, right? Because they hired us because of that, right? They, they saw our work and said, hey, we want this. And what we did is, as experts is we say, all right, you don't have to do it exactly this way, but here's how to get it close to what we're thinking. You know, here's how to get it close to what you've you've seen and what you like, because you already know that they are they hired you for you. And so that was really cool. That really clicked me in. And so once that, that once that helped us set us apart, I started breaking apart the wedding guide and creating emails from that content. I started, you know, sending other vendors my wedding guide uh, just to help them, you know, use it in their business or promote it. And it was really cool. And so as we set ourselves apart, our value went up, right? Our couples were taking photos of our wedding guide when we sent it to them and posting on social media. So it would grow our Instagram and grow our following. That was helping. And then in addition... Once we set ourselves apart, that increased our value, right? We're no longer just another photographer in DC. In DC, there are 20,000 wedding photographers, right? People talk about like, oh, how do I stand out in my market? Just stand out, step away. You know, something Sam Hurd said to me a long time ago, he said, hey, when everybody is zigging, make the choice to zag. And, um, you know, I don't feel like I am so off the wall or so different, but in my market, you know, the thing that I most care about and the thing that my mortgage cares about and the thing that our team cares about, we're different, you know, and we're continually striving to be something else, if that makes sense. Um, you know, for couples who find us and they go, wow, this is this is exactly what we're looking for. This is we love how this makes us feel. That's who we want. And for couples who see our stuff and they're like, oh, this is not me. Like, we need more Posey. We need more Barbie and Ken. We need more uh, light and airy. We need more washed out skies, you know, which is totally fine. Um, that's not for us most of the time. Most of those couples don't book us and that is totally fine. And by doing so, that's helped us, you know, narrow down our ideal client too. And so we have a niche um, and it's really helped us increase our value, right? Because now we are no longer just another photographer, right? We are Mason photography, colorful photos for colorful people. We're all inclusive. We're modern. We're a little bit different than the other people in our city, in our niche. Um, you know, everything looks different. Everything feels different. And then in addition, when a client books us, they're not just reserving their date and then they're going to pay us the remainder when we show up, right? They're getting a hundred page book as a gift to help them have the wedding day that shows that photos are valuable and that they are valuable. And so as a photographer, we're telling the couple that, and that is, it's hard to display, you know, before, uh, before the client meeting or before your sales meeting or whatever. Um, but it helps so much 
make us feel more like a brand and a business and professionals. You know, now that we've shot, you know, our team together shot 400 weddings, right? So like when you tell a couple that and you say, yeah, we're, we're not just getting started. You know, uh, most venues that our couples get married at, we've already shot at 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 50 times. And so that has been really, really cool. So we can increase our value. We can raise our prices, right? Um, You know, in a competitive market, in a market where it's crazy. Like next year, we have 63 weddings right now, which is insane. The most we've ever done during a pandemic, right? Like we booked all of that stuff during a pandemic. Some of that is reschedules. Some of that is new bookings. And we're ready. Every wedding, we're ready. It's going to be awesome. You know, we're going to work our butts off. That's for sure. But that's the, the thing I'm looking forward to. And we're making money because we were able to stand out from from the crowd and i think that has been so helpful now to really like hone in and step into our brand so all that to say you know set yourself apart right that's one of the things that you need to do like why are you different increase your value make it easy for couples to say yes something we've talked about in the podcast since day one disproportionate value when people come to your site or they have the impression of your brand or they're referred by another vendor and they go wow this feels like a $10,000 photographer. And then they see your, you know, your middle package, right? Your most book package is 6,500 or 5,500. They go, of course we're getting a steal, you know, and not that they're going to abuse you, but they're like, yes, make it an easy yes for them. So when you show them the value, you position yourself as an expert, right? With something like a wedding guide, that is what's going to help sell them. You are no longer just another photographer in their spreadsheet. You're a brand with a mission, with a vision, with a purpose, with a uh, a statement of who you are and what you believe and what you're going to do to help your couples have the wedding that looks and feels how what they saw in your photos. And that is so much different versus like, oh, yeah, eight hours engagement sessions. Uh, you know, we're so great. Uh, you know, have passport will travel. Right. All that stuff is fine. But that's low level. That is not for you. You are here to set a legacy and this is what you're going to do. And so I know it it feels like silly and weird and salesy to be like, guys, we're launching a wedding guide, customizable template this Friday, two days from now, if you're listening to this or watching this uh, on the podcast and it's going to be so ready for you and your brand. And you can adopt some of my language. You can adopt all of it if you like other than just switch out, you know, Adam and the team, Uh, you know. But that, I think that is the difference between our wedding guide and some of the other wedding guides that I saw is we don't want couples to feel like they're put in a box. It's one of our brand values. We want couples who hire us to say, this is how you're going to achieve that Mesa photography look and feel that you've come to know and love. And that just replace your brand with that. That's what we want to happen. Um, and I think too, if you're in that $2,000 wedding, $3,000, $4,500, maybe even $5,500 wedding, uh, market, and you haven't adopted this like client gift post booking workflow, just start with the wedding guide, wedding guide. And like we have, um, custom, uh, letter pressed note cards that I write a handwritten note, like Jimmy Fallon, thank you cards, um, to our clients. And I send that, I send the wedding guide, I send something else, like I said, that posts on Patreon. Uh, I send a few things, um, you know, and we now send customizable customizable, uh, masks or custom masks for clients that we love. And that is such a great first impression. You know, we're just buying trust back, right? They just gave us a huge deposit, right? So they're like, okay, hopefully these people are are the real deal. And then we just, boom, hit them with that value, hit them with that wedding guide. Something, an analogy I think of, when my wife and I bought our house, we, is our first time, right? Similar to a wedding, right? And people will give you advice. And there's lots of advice online. And there's lots of YouTube videos, right? That's where couples sit. They're sitting in that sea of advice. And so all of that stuff is there. But what they need is clarity. And then they need direction on how far to go in that same direction. And so when you step out and you're that vendor and you give that advice, you are giving them direction. You're giving them clarity. And they they don't say, oh, I heard on the internet that this is what I should do. They say, my photographer, our photographer, our photography team led us to this way. This feels right. This seems good. And you're not trying to win a debate with them by any means and do 100% of our couples ever you know, do everything perfectly right? No, uh, but most of them do. And that has been why we've been able to get consistent work. That's my biggest goal is I want all of our work to feel consistent. It's still different for every couple, uh, but I want it to feel consistent and for them to be like yes this is exactly what we expected you know or even more and 
you know, buying a house, our realtor was so good about like letting us know what was going to happen next, you know? And so in our wedding guide, I give them the, the timeline of like, Hey, here's when we'll book your engagement session. Here's what to wear for your engagement session. Here's, uh, what times of seasons we come into uh, to shoot your session so they can plan around work you know because we usually shoot on weekdays and so they're like what time do we need to plan our makeup and hair and all that stuff um and so again all of that value means that you can raise your price and have more fun at weddings have a more fulfilling wedding uh lifestyle and workflow and really it also helps you earn respect man if you've ever had a couple or a client that was red flag before you said yes you book them and then it's just red flag after red flag. And you're like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do a good job. This wedding guide erases most of that. It just sets the tone early. And then any th- what happens, and this has never happened to me, but what can happen is any time a client says, hey, you know, we didn't get the photos we wanted. Or um, like we we didn't, the light wasn't as flattering for our first look photos as what we've seen. But maybe they went against your timeline advice, right? really gently you can like i don't get those emails we'll put it that way we i don't get the emails because it's in the wedding guide like we told them we gave them the advice and said hey here's how you're going to look awesome here's that mace photography saucy light we're looking for um and again i I just can't express how much that is is valuable to couples um and to other venues so i want to talk about our wedding guide real quick and just kind of let you know what's going to go on with ours and i think it'll be really beneficial for you so yeah like i said friday 8 a.m. We are launching a customizable template wedding guide uh, of the one that I use and send to couples every week um, for you. And it's going to have modern design, just like ours, right? You know, very like not sans serif font, modern colors, you know, black and white that you guys can customize to match your brand color, stuff like that. But the coolest thing, the thing that I learned most from uh, from other photographers and that I think you guys can learn most from is over 25 different topics that I talk about in there. Everything from engagement session outfits to, uh, you know, pre-ceremony tips, uh, sample wedding timelines with and without a first look, um, stress-free family photo list, right? So couples are like, we know we needed to take those photos, but we don't want it to feel like a chore. So my family photo sessions or like family photo, uh, formals under 30 minutes every time whether it's 150 people or 10 people, like under 30 minutes, uh, rainy day wedding tips, right? So something I thought about when we were making this is like, how do I get ahead of the little fears and the questions, right? That they're going to ask, right? So you could even put in things like, you know, how do second photographers work? How does our gallery, how do we actually get our photos, right? Because they, they asked you that on the phone call maybe, but why not answer that again? Why not walk them through that process? How do albums work, right? It's another opportunity for a sale to make more money. Talk about legacy. Talk about albums. Tell a story about albums in the back of your wedding guide. Why not? Um, day of reminders. So that's something too I love because the, the greatest thing ever, guys, is when you show up to a wedding and there's a copy of the wedding guide uh, on the table. Like, what a badass feeling, right? Like that is so, you walk in, mom gives you a hug, you know, non-COVID times gives you a hug, says what's up, Brad gives you a hug. And then you see the wedding guide there and you're like, oh, they used my day of reminder list and everything is there. So if you like to shoot flat lays, let them know what the, you need for that. Let them know in that wedding guide, like what they should have. And it's going to be really, really cool. So uh, that is our wedding guide that we are launching. Um, it's going to have, you know, inclusive language that we've researched. There's no bride or groom language unless it's really applicable. Um, we've partnered with all kinds of couples in developing the language and imagery to help couples feel welcome. Uh, and so I think that can be really, really crucial for you guys if you're trying to be an inclusive vendor to not just help people feel welcome, but to feel wanted. Um, in addition to the template and the cover options that you guys are going to have, we have a few different cover options for you guys. You're also going to get access to all the copy and the text in the guide. So like... You get the template, customize it, make it really easy. It's just an InDesign, and we even have videos on how to you know, swap out photos and swap out text. Uh, but you can even use most of our text to send to your couples. Um, I've also even included a video on how to get it printed properly to make it really nice and awesome. Ours usually end up being between like 20 and $22 per book, um, which might seem expensive, but it's so nice. And then here's the kicker. Here's the cool thing about having your own wedding guide that I think is awesome and printed again. I love the online ones. We have online versions, but having a printed one is so cool because once the couple is done with that wedding guide, what I tell them, and I say this when it's given to them, it's like, Hey, after your wedding, I would love if you gifted this to one of your friends getting married. 
what a freaking referral, right? They get this book and they say, hey, you liked our wedding photos, right? And they're like, yeah, we loved your wedding photos. You know, it was so fun to be there, but it's so cool to see the photos, right? And then they get a wedding uh, guide from the photographer and say, hey, here's how we did it, right? Well, of course they want to book you because you helped their friends look freaking awesome. And that is awesome. Like, why can't that be your brand? And again, more referrals, right? Big marketing play, big marketing play, big value play, right? We're going to raise our rates. Why? Because we are no longer just a photographer, but we are an expert, okay? We're an expert in our field. We are setting the tone. We're setting our couples up for success. And thirdly, we're going to have more fun, less stress at weddings, which every couple wants. That's the easiest thing you can market, right? Don't be like, oh yeah, my couple, my photos are moody, right? Be like, what do you help couples do? I help couples feel relaxed in front of the camera. I give them direction on how to pose. I give them direction on outfits. I give them direction on all these things. They don't have to say yes to it, but if they do, you're setting them up for success, and that's awesome. And ultimately, all of this, guys, people buy from brands they know, like, and trust. They already know you. This wedding guide will help you help them like you, and then ultimately, they're going to trust you even more. And when they trust you even more, and they like you even more, and they know you even more, the photos are better. And so it's just a vicious cycle of awesomeness, okay? Like, that is why I'm so passionate about this. Like, guys, it is... This is the number one thing that just sets us apart from our competition. While other photographers want to scale back on what they spend, they want to scale back on their client experience. They don't have a CRM, even which is a whole other episode on that. You know, we want to dive in and say, how can we help? How can we make your wedding feel and look the way that you've seen and you've seen yourself in our photos, right? That's what freaking matters. So Friday morning, uh, I don't even know the date, uh, October 30th. This is our first product. Uh, I'm going to offer you guys exclusive launch pricing for that launch week. All right. So for you guys only, if you're listening, if you're in the Facebook group, that is the only way that you guys will get launch pricing. So TOGFB.com. All right. This is going to retail for two thirty nine. All right. But after that, but for launch pricing, we're going to give you a huge discount. So you're not even going to know, but you're going to get a huge discount. Um, and that's only going to be for that first week. It'll never be cheaper than this uh for you guys now is the time uh friday to make it happen come join our facebook group togfb.com we'll be doing videos uh little different guides and it's going to be awesome on how to use it and then ultimately when you guys fill it out and print yours and awesome i want to see it i want to see like how this has changed your brand and helped you level up so i'm really really excited so there you have it, folks. This Friday, TOGFB.com, you're going to get access to early bird, launch pricing, whatever you want to call it, of our customizable wedding guide template, over 25 topics, inclusive language, modern design. You can swap out anything you want. It also comes with videos on how to print uh, and customize your wedding guide. Also, a bonus video is included on how I would market and launch your guide to help you get more referrals, more leads, more clients, more money, and ultimately a more fulfilled life. So guys, TOGFB.com this Friday. If you haven't listened already, that is where you're going to need to go this particular week. It's going to be awesome. Don't miss out on launch pricing. You will regret it. It'll never be this cheap again. Really excited for you guys. Have a wonderful week and keep being awesome. We'll see you next week.